Hello everyone. This is Selma Edgar broadcasting from St. Charles, Missouri. This is my name right here, Selma Edgar, married to Norman. We are Protestant Christian missionaries and the only reason that we're on Periscope is to tell you that God loves you and that Jesus has made a way for you to go to heaven and escape the lake of fire which is hell. Heaven is real and hell is real and when you die you go to one place or the other there is nothing in between no other choices once you get to hell it's too late to change your mind about believing in Jesus and that is the only way you get to heaven is by faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior we also have a website it's how to become a Christian today .com. we also have a new internet radio station and you can get to it by this mongnews.org h-m-o-n-g-n-e-w-s dot o-r-g so you go there it's the name of our radio station is God Spokesman and God has given us this new avenue to talk to the world about Jesus Christ about the way of salvation about the fact that the Protestant Christian Bible is the only true Bible. It is the only inspired word from God to man. It is the only truth in the world. All other religious books, all other Bibles are written by man. They do not tell what God has said. They don't tell the truth that you have to be spiritually born again in order to go to heaven. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus is God, and so he ought to know. He said you must repent and you must be born again. He also described what hell is like. Hello there. Well, wow, that's a long name. Welcome to my broadcast. So, this is me right here. You're in Ukraine. Well, hello. It's great to have you. This is my name, Selma Edker, 69 years old, married to Norman, broadcasting from St. Charles, Missouri in the United States. And as always, I am here to tell the world, thank you very much. It's nice to meet you, too. I'm here only for one reason, and that's to tell the world about Jesus. And it's only by faith in Jesus, by being born again, that a person can go to heaven when they die. And we believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible, because it is the true Bible, God's revelation to all mankind. And it is only the New Testament of the Protestant Christian Bible that is applicable to the believers of Jesus today. We are only to live by the words of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible. Thank you for those hearts. I appreciate it. This morning, well, it's morning here in the United States. Um, I am going to talk specifically about an incident in the New Testament about an incident in the New Testament in the book of Mark chapter 3 and Jesus has come into this particular town and into this I don't know if it's a home or a synagogue it doesn't say or maybe it does I don't remember anyway there's a man there with a withered hand. His, his hand is all shriveled up and it doesn't function. 
And Jesus, in his compassion, heals the man's hand. That, by itself, is a wonderful story. Jesus had so much love and compassion for this man that he healed his hand so that it was normal. However, there were some of the Jewish religious leaders there and they didn't like Jesus, they didn't believe in Jesus, and they were always trying to trap him. Hello there. Good to see you. They were always trying to trap him in a situation and accuse him of doing things wrong. And they really wanted to kill him. And it was because they were jealous of Jesus. Jealousy is a terrible, terrible thing. It causes people to do great, evil things. Jealousy is from the devil because God is love. So this was on the Sabbath day when Jesus healed this man's hand. The religious leaders, these Jewish religious leaders, were so bound up in their traditions, their man-made rules of how things were supposed to be, that they wanted to accuse Jesus of doing something wrong on the Sabbath day. They thought it was wrong even to do a wonderful thing like healing the man's hand. Because their rules, their tradition said you weren't supposed to do anything on the Sabbath day. And that is so legalistic when a person thinks they have to abide by the rules and traditions that men have made up that is legalism that is not about God God is love God is compassionate and so Jesus wasted no time in healing this man's hand these religious leaders had no compassion for the man whatsoever. They didn't care about his withered hand. All they cared about was following their own rules, which absolutely meant nothing. It didn't accomplish anything for them. But they were self-righteous religious leaders. They made up their own rules and laws to live by. And unfortunately, that, <clears throat> that is the way that it is still today. In the Protestant Christian churches, sadly, they make up their own doctrine, their own positional papers, and that's what they live by instead of preaching the salvation message from the Protestant Christian Bible instead of having compassion for the people who are going to hell they only want to preach a prosperity message or a social gospel to get people to come and fill up their churches and give their money and that's a Sometimes when I say that, I just find it so hard to comprehend that that is actually reality. And yet it is. As sad as it is. Tell the diaper story, please. <laughs> My husband Norman is in the next room. He is in there uh, working on the computer on our radio station and he said please tell the diaper story there is one of the largest churches here in this area it's very close to our home and they 
every, well, at least this is the second year anyway that we know of, on their church sign, it's about collecting diapers. That is their focus here with Christmas coming up. They want everybody to bring in diapers, and that's, that's their gospel, you might say. People are dying, actually going to hell today, right here in this town. Yes. And they're worried yes. about diapers. Can you imagine right. Jesus asking, would you please bring your Playtex diaper? Oh, nice. Yes. It's, you know, another thing it says in this, in this story here, that Jesus grieved for the hardness of the hearts of these religious leaders. And when I read that, a couple of days ago, I thought, wow, you know, that's the way Norman and I feel also. It grieves our hearts for the hardness of people's hearts that do not want to hear about Jesus. And there's a, a scripture verse that I'm going to read you. This is from Romans chapter 2, verses 4 and 5 in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. And this was written by the Apostle Paul to the Roman people. He said, Do you show contempt for the riches of God's kindness, tolerance, and patience? Not realizing that God's kindness leads you to repentance, but because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. So anyone whose heart is stubborn and unrepentant is going to suffer God's wrath in the end. It says in John 3, verse 36, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. And then he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Could I insert something here? Okay. May I sit down by side you? All right, my honey is joining me. He wants to add something to this message. Uh, hi there, how are you guys? Good? All right. Uh, something I want to add. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody there or not, but if you're there, okay. All of our messages are recorded, so it, it uh, irregardless if you're if we have listeners or not. But something that Selma said that I want to I want you to realize, and this this is really important. I would say the majority of people have no idea. They think they're going to be punished by the wrath of God, and that is a misnomer. That's a miscommunication. God does not punish you. Here's what. Here's what. When we say the wrath of God. God is not a wrathful God. He doesn't come down and put his thumb on you or afflict you with this or that. True. When we talk about you're going <clears> to <throat> receive the wrath of God, that means you have to look at it in the sense that it was written. The wrath of God is the punishment for the sins you committed. Okay, and as we can read in the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, the New Testament is clear as the Old Testament, to love God first, with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor. Now, when you rebel against God, you can read in the Old Testament, there was punishment. And every sin, every disobedience to what God says... In the New Testament, through Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, there's a punishment. If you want to defy God, 
if you want, and there's degrees of punishment. So when you do evil and do something wrong, all right, that begins to affect the wrath of God. The wrath is the punishment for your sin. Now, i give you another example. You incur wrath, you incur punishment for your sins, all right? Now, in the New Testament, it's clear that the punishment you will receive, Jesus talks about it if you don't forgive people. If you don't forgive someone that's wronged you, then you will be tormented by the tormentors in your present life if you don't forgive. That's incurring the wrath of God. That's the punishment for your sins. So we need to be clear about that, that the wrath God doesn't arbitrarily just decide to punish you. It's a punishment for your sins. That's one set. And the other set you need to be clear about is that when you understand about God, the world is in evil now because of sin and degradation. The world, billions of people on this planet right now reject the Protestant Christian Bible. They reject God. They reject the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, by rejecting God, the punishment for rejecting God is the chaos, murder, and mayhem that we have on the planet now. Yes. All right? There's punishment from God for your sins against God. And that punishment is called the wrath of God. If you wouldn't sin against God, you wouldn't have the wrath. You wouldn't have punishment. All right? That's what it is when you become a new creature in Christ. New creature in Christ. The power of sin, the temptation for you to sin now is canceled in your life. It doesn't have power over you. You are more than a conqueror, the Bible says. But it's through grace, God's power, strength, love, and favor. It's not by your strength, it's by God's strength who helps you. If you occasionally sin, you need to get right with the Lord, ask Jesus to forgive you, and you get up and keep going. But if you habitually sin, you're not you're not spiritually born again. That's all I want to say. Thank you. All right, honey, thanks. All right. Thank you. Let me move back over here a little bit. Okay, so in this, um, in this short story in the book of Mark, these religious leaders hated Jesus so much they even accused him of being possessed by the devil. Think about that. Here is God in the flesh, Jesus, the divine God-man. And these religious leaders hate them, hate him so much, they accuse of him of being possessed by the devil. And there's an old saying here in, in the United States, I don't know if people in other countries are familiar with it, it says, the pot calling the kettle black. In other words, the pot, the pot's black, but it's accusing the kettle of being black. In other words, these religious leaders were the ones that were inspired by the devil. The devil was using them to spew out hatred upon Jesus. So, anyone that hates God or ignores God is being influenced by the devil. There's a spiritual war going on over everyone's soul. God wants you to have faith in Jesus Christ, to repent and be born again so that you can go to heaven. The devil wants you to turn completely away from God, follow any false religion, or no religion at all, so that you'll end up going to hell when you die. And it is totally up to you. It's your decision. 
We always encourage everyone to read the Protestant Christian Bible and especially the New Testament. In the New Testament, you can read the words of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists. That is God's divine revelation to all mankind. And it is the, the guide, the instruction book for the followers of Jesus. You need to read it yourself and understand the simple, plain teachings of Jesus that you must repent and be born again. The Bible describes what heaven is like and it describes what hell is. And it tells who will go to hell and that is everyone who rejects Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So, the world as a general rule believes that everyone is a child of God and that God is a loving God and He would not send His children to hell. In fact, yesterday I had someone ask a question about that. If you are truly a child of God, that means you've been spiritually born again and you're a follower of Jesus and you're obeying God's Word in the New Testament. Only those are children of God. Everyone else, believe it or not, is a child of the devil, as bad as that sounds. But there is nothing in between. And I know that before I was born again, I had no idea that my life was being controlled by the devil. People don't realize that or understand it. And then when you're born again, the Word of God comes alive to you and wow, and then you see how true that is. Everyone thinks they're in charge of their own life and yet Satan is right there beside you constantly influencing your thoughts, tempting you to do wicked things, telling you lies. All of these religions that are not about faith in Jesus Christ, about being born again, they're from the devil. The devil has an endless supply of lies, an endless supply of false religions, of false beliefs that people choose to believe and follow and they don't know they're heading straight for hell. There was, when Norman was on this morning, there was somebody asked him, well, what do you think about Christian science? Well, I can tell you firsthand about Christian science and I realize that it is not one of the most well-known cults in the world, but there are people who are in it, and this person was questioning about it. It is a cult. A cult is a religion that was started by one person. They have written their own beliefs, and everybody who belongs to that religion follows the beliefs of that person, and not the Bible. They are not believing in God. Christian science is a terrible cult. I was raised in it. My mom took me to a Christian science church when I was growing up. Thankfully, by God's grace, I was not brainwashed into believing what they believed. And I can... I can just never thank God enough for that because generally when you're a child, whatever religion you're taught, you get brainwashed into it. But it never made sense to me. So 
when I then was grown and I got away from that, it did have a negative effect on me because I didn't want to have anything to do with going to church or reading the Bible because it was a bad experience for me. So, don't get involved in Christian science. It's a terrible thing. As well as Roman Catholicism, Islam, Hindus, Buddhists, the Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, the the Amish and Mennonites, the Baha'i faith, so-called faith, just all the New Age stuff. It's all from the devil. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's very, very plain and simple. Jesus said, I am the way to the Father. Meaning, I am the way to heaven. Only by Jesus. He said, I am the truth. There can only be one truth. And he said, I am the life. Meaning, Jesus alone can give one new life. A spiritual rebirth that actually transforms you into a new person in Christ Jesus. Again, people want to believe that everyone is a child of God. But it says in the book, the Gospel of John, first chapter, verse 12, it says, As many as received him, talking about Jesus, as many as received Jesus, meaning as many as believed on Jesus as the Savior, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. It is only those who repent and become spiritually born again, according to Jesus' instructions. It is only those who become the children of God. There was, um, it tells also in this, this book of Mark, later in the chapter, that uh, some of Jesus' disciples came to him and said, Your mother and your brethren are waiting outside for you. And he said, Who is my mother and who is my brethren? He said, It is those who do the will of God. The will of God is that everyone becomes spiritually born again. In doing that, you become a member of God's family. That's what Jesus was saying. You're in my family when you accept me as your Lord and Savior, and when you obey me. That is the true church. The true family of God is only those who are spiritually born again. There are millions of people who go to church and read the Bible and think they're Christians. And again, that was true of me when I finally did decide approximately at the age of 40, I began to have a desire to go to church and read the Bible. And I thought that made me a Christian. I was convinced that I was a Christian. But I never heard the salvation message. All of those churches I went to for a period of approximately 10 years, none of them ever preach the message of salvation, that you have to be born again, that you have to repent in order to go to heaven. So, at the age of 50 is when I first heard about being born again. And I thank God 
that he was so merciful to me. He allowed me to live and not die before I became spiritually born again. And Jesus said to his followers, Go preach and make disciples. All of us who have been spiritually born again are to share with the world that they need to be spiritually born again. And when you are born again, it is the love of God that is shed into your heart and the compassion, just like Jesus had compassion on this man with a withered hand. He loved him and had compassion on him and he immediately healed his hand. God loves everyone. It says in John 3, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So the difference he's talking about perishing is going to hell when you die. Everlasting life is living forever in heaven with God. A beautiful, beautiful place. The Bible describes it. And hell is a lake of fire, a place of eternal torment. So, just as Jesus, it says, Jesus was grieved over the hardness of the hearts of those religious leaders. Norman and I feel the same way. It grieves us when people's hearts are so hardened they don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want to think about Jesus. They want to go on living their life of sin, just going on their merry way, enjoying their sins, living for themselves, and oblivious to the fact that when they die, they're going to hell, and then it'll be too late, and most people think they've got years and years to live. They'll think about it when they get older. But, as it says in the Bible, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. And people get killed every day of the year, unexpectedly. And then it's too late. So, the most important thing you can ever do in your life is to read the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament for yourself. Read the words of Jesus and decide if you believe it or not. If you choose not to believe it, you're sending yourself to hell. God doesn't do that. It's your own choice. But God's grace... Hello there. Welcome. God's grace is his love and favor for all people. Uh, are you talking about people dying today? I just looked up the United Nations. They have a report for people dying in the United States. Yeah. It's 6,700 people a day are dying. Every day. every day? Every day. Wow. 6,770 is what the United Nations says. For wow. the United States. Okay, in case you couldn't hear Norman, he was standing here in the doorway. He just looked up on the internet. It says that the United Nations has a figure for how many people die every day, and you know, as an average. And in the United States, it says 6,770 people a day die. And so, if those, if all of those people have rejected Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that means that those 6,770 people every day are going to hell. Just think about that. It doesn't have to be that way. 
all it requires is humility on your part. It says in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that people perish, meaning go to hell, because they do not have a love for the truth. If you choose to believe any of the lies of the devil instead of the truth of God, you will perish. But God's grace is available for every person because God loves everyone. God's grace is His love for the people. It's His favor towards each one in spite of how sinful a person is. God's extending His favor to you and, and wanting you to understand that He's willing to forgive you. No matter what you've done, God will forgive if you truly repent. God's grace is there wooing people, wanting people to seek after Him, to allow their hearts to become softened enough to listen to the gospel message. Hello there, New Wave. God's grace is an amazing thing. There's a song called Amazing Grace. God's grace helps people to understand who He is. To understand about Jesus' atonement on the cross. And that is the only way we can be justified to come into God's presence is by justification that Jesus accomplished on the cross. And that means Jesus willingly died on the cross as a substitute for each one of us. He took the punishment for our sins. Jesus is God. He was a divine God-man when He was here on the earth. He never gave in to the temptations of Satan even though he was greatly tempted. And that made him a sinless sacrifice. He shed his blood for each one of us. And that's called the atonement. Jesus died in our place. So that we can be justified before God. But we have to believe by faith in what Jesus did. We have to accept it by faith. But God's grace is there to help us do that. Ephesians 2.8 says, It is by grace you are saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Just think about that. How much God loves you. It's so much that He is willing to give you the free gift of salvation. All you have to do is humble yourself and repent. And repentance is turning from your old life and deciding in your heart, not just in your head, but it's a heart decision that you want to obey Jesus, that you want Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And if you make a decision, you say, God, please forgive me. I am sorry for my sins. And I will obey you, and I will serve you. I will live for you. That is true repentance. You can't just say, I'm sorry, God, and I know Jesus died for my sins. That doesn't get you anything. It is a true heart surrender, surrendering your will, surrendering your life unto the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And when you do that, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit of God then coexists within you. The love of God coexists in your heart, and you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. 
and the old life passes away, the Bible says, and all things become new. And that is why it's called being born again. You are a brand new person. It is a supernatural transformation. And it's real. And that love of God then that comes into your heart, that is what compels us to share the gospel message with the people of the world. God doesn't want people to go to hell. And he puts that love of his into the hearts of those who are born again. And so we too do not want people to go to hell. And that is why we come on Periscope, Norman and I. That is why we have set up this internet radio station, which again, I'll hold up my sign, because God has given us these two outlets so that we can actually talk to people around the world and share the good news. The gospel message means good news. It is salvation through Jesus Christ alone. You don't have to go to hell when you die. And so it, it is as if we are holding up a warning sign a danger sign. I'll share again just a little something I did yesterday. I heard on the local news here just a few days ago about a lady in the city who ignored the street sign saying don't go down the street because there was a problem ahead and she ignored the warning sign she went down the street and her car ended up in a five-foot deep hole. That's really dumb. So, I'm going to be so bold as to say it is really dumb if you hear the gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ alone and you ignore it or you choose not to believe it. You're going to end up in that hole which is hell. It's a lake of fire and you won't be able to get out. It is too late when you die. You cannot change your mind. But don't ever think, don't ever say that God sends people to hell because he does not. You alone choose your eternal destiny. And it is either by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior or rejecting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. One, the right decision takes you to heaven. The wrong decision takes you to hell. I have a little uh, leaflet here I'll show again as I did yesterday. What you miss by being a Christian the answer is on the inside. That's about as plain as it can be. Hello there. So being a Christian, being a true Christian, means more than just going to church or, or reading your Bible. Being a true Christian is to be spiritually born again. And so, for anyone who didn't hear the whole message, if you're truly interested in... Um, <laughs> hear my little parakeet over there in the corner He's fluttering and making a lot of noise. I'm sure everyone out there knows you can replay this broadcast if you really want to know about being spiritually born again. And, and I, I truly hope that some of you will. Okay, thank you. Yes, God truly loves every person so much that he died for each one of us. Not only did he die, 
but he suffered unbelievable agony even before he died and you may know this already but anyone who's not read the New Testament of the Protestant Christian Bible it tells how the people mocked Jesus they made fun of him when they took him captive they pulled out his beard they put a crown of thorns upon his head and and then smote him on the head so that his head was bleeding they they beat him unmercifully and then after all that they put him on the cross and hammered these huge spikes through his hands and his feet and it's not like Jesus didn't know what was going to happen to him he knew ahead of time and yet he willingly suffered all of that for each one of us what love we cannot begin to comprehend what a loving God he is so my prayer always is that some will choose that love of God choose to surrender your heart and your life unto Jesus and experience that love of God that doesn't mean that you'll never have problems in your life even after you're born again you're still going to have problems and trials and difficulties and heartaches and in some ways it's even more so because when you love Jesus with all your heart and serve him there's going to be a lot of people that reject you and don't want to be around you and that even includes family members on the other hand whatever you go through you know that Jesus is there with you helping you guiding you giving you wisdom undergirding you and you know that one day you'll be in heaven when you die so my friends hi there Carell good to see you again um, so that's my message for today and um, this is Wednesday tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day here in the United States and yet um, the majority of people that I hear around me anymore hi um, they just call it Turkey Day so um, that shows me that all those people do not love God for them it's only about having a big feast is all Thanksgiving Day is to most people but for those of us who love the Lord it is just another day to be thankful for everything that God has done and is doing and yes we do enjoy the the big dinner with the turkey but that's just a that's a, a side pleasure you might say but we are very very thankful to God for everything that he's done for Norman and I one of the biggest things that we are grateful for is that God joined us together three and a half years ago as husband and wife <laughs> sure come on over <laughs> so God is a good God he's been good to us just like everyone else in the world we have our own problems heartaches and difficulties just because we're missionaries for the Lord it doesn't mean we're exempt we have problems just like everyone else but we love the Lord with all our hearts and we just and we love each other and in spite of all the difficulties we have a wonderful time together oh thank you Harley what a sweet thing to say 
So, my friends, I pray that all of you will give thanks to God for His goodness. And if you don't know Jesus, that you will read that New Testament for yourself and decide to become a follower of Jesus. Hello there, Aaron. Sorry, I'm just getting ready to sign off for those of you who have just come on in the last minute or two. But this is my name right here, Selma Edker, and I'm on... Well, I'm not going to answer that question. Norman has been um, a missionary for many years. And he knows how to... <laughs> Thank you, Harley. He knows how to read people. And um, a lot of people are not sincere when they come on and say all kinds of things. So... Thank you, Harley. I appreciate that. So, turn to Jesus. That's my final word, if you don't know him already. I will be back on Sunday, Lord willing. And uh, Norman's on every morning at 9 o'clock. See you later. Bye.